If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. Our first step would be to draw a picture that is based on the given information. So here we have the cliff and at the top of the cliff is the projectile that's being fired at an angle. And the question in part A wants us to determine the initial total mechanical energy of the projectile. And so we want to identify the types of energy that are present initially at this moment of the launch of the projectile. Now the projectile is moving, right, because it's been launched with a speed of 120 meters per second. And because it's moving, it's going to have some kinetic energy. So we can begin to say that the initial energy will equal some kinetic energy. There's going to be a second form of energy. Because the projectile is located at a certain height above the ground level, it's going to have gravitational potential energy as well. And so we can label that PE with a little g to represent gravitational potential energy. Now, of course, the initial kinetic energy would be 1 half times the mass times the initial speed of the object squared. And then the initial potential energy would be mass times g times the initial height of the object. And we were given all of these quantities. We know the mass is 50 kilograms. The initial speed, as noted, was 120 meters per second. And then the initial height is 142 meters. So let's go ahead and plug in all those known values. And so when you plug that all into your calculator, you're going to get approximately 4.3 times 10 to the power of 5. And then the standard unit of energy will be joules. So this will be the correct answer to part A, which again is the initial total mechanical energy of the projectile. Now for part B, we are asked to determine the amount of work that has been done on the projectile by air friction. Now air friction is what we call a non-conservative force, and so it's going to do some non-conservative work. That simply means that the friction is going to remove some of the energy from the projectile. And in order to determine how much energy is being removed from the projectile, we can use the following expression. We're basically looking for the final energy of the projectile minus its initial energy. Now for the final energy, the projectile is still moving and it still has a height. So we're going to have kinetic and potential energies again. This time for the kinetic energy, we can use 1 half times the mass times the final speed squared. And then for the gravitational potential energy, we'll use mass times g times the final height. We're going to have a different value for the final height, as we'll see in a moment. So this would be the final energy. And then we're going to subtract the initial energy. But we just determined that in part A of the problem. So we can actually fill that in right here. Now continu continuing on, we can plug in the mass, which was 50 kilograms. And we will omit the kilograms for clarity right now. The final speed was given to us as 85 meters per second in this part of the problem. Don't forget to square it. And then we have the mass again times the gravitational constant. And now the final height is 427 meters rather than the 142 in part A. So we can fill that in as well. And then we'll subtract this 4.3 times 10 to the fifth joules. So let's pick up our calculators and type this all in and then subtract that quantity in the right parentheses. And when you do that, you end up with negative 3.97 times 10 to the power of 4 joules. So this will be the correct answer to part B. Again, this is how much work the non-conservative air friction force has done on the projectile. Now in part C, we are told that the air friction is going to do one and a half times as much work when it is going down as it did when it was going up. So when the projectile is going up, there was a certain amount of non-conservative work done that we just figured out. And then the question is indicating that on its way down, there is going to be one and a half times, or 1.5 times, that non-conservative work. So that means that the total work, which we could symbolize with this sigma w, the total work is going to be the non-conservative work done on the way up, plus the non-conservative work done on the way down. Now, we remember there's a coefficient of 1 in front of here, so we can actually combine these into 2.5 times the non-conservative work. So we'll take the amount of work that we just determined and plug it in. And when we multiply this, we get negative 9.93 times 10 to the power of 4 joules. So this is not our answer yet, but this is the total amount of work that's being done on the projectile. 
Now let's look at the work energy theorem for the total duration of the flight of this projectile. The work energy theorem would tell us that the total amount of non-conservative work done is going to equal the final kinetic and potential energies minus the initial kinetic and potential energies. Now let's note that as the projectile falls down and hits that moment just before it hits the ground, the amount of gravitational potential energy is going to be zero joules, and that's because the object is no longer at any height above the ground level. So we can actually take out this term. That somewhat simplifies the equation to the final kinetic energy minus, and what we're going to do is distribute this minus sign. So we'll actually have minus the initial kinetic energy and then minus the initial potential energy. And again, this is equal to the total non-conservative work. Let's fill in the expressions for final kinetic energy. So we would have one half times the mass times the final speed squared minus one half times mass times initial speed squared and then minus mg times the initial height. Now, of course, our goal is to find this final speed right here. And one way of doing that would be to first multiply every single term by two. And if we do that, then the twos and the one halves are going to cancel out. And then these two negative terms here can be added over to the left hand side. We could then divide both sides of the equation by the mass. And that way it's going to cancel out on the right hand side. And then finally we'll square root both sides. And of course when we square root the right hand side, this squared here is going to go away. So now we have the expression for the final speed and we can simply plug in all the known values. We know the mass, we know g, we know the initial height was 142 meters. And we also know the initial speed, which was that 120 meters per second. And then the total amount of non-conservative work was calculated in part b. And so we've plugged in all the known values and when you carefully plug that into your calculator, you should get approximately 115 meters per second for the final speed of the projectile. So this is the correct answer to part.